So let's invite the first corporate on trading hour today, and that is Datamatics. The company reported the Q1 numbers. The top line is looking good. It's an over 4% increase on a quarter on quarter basis. On a year on year basis, revenues have improved by 13.6%. As I said, margins have taken a bit of a hit on a sequential basis, coming in at 14.6%. To discuss the numbers, we're now joined by Rahul Kanodia, the vice chairman and CEO of Datamatics. Uh, Mr. Kanodia, morning. This is Reema here, and thanks so much for joining in. Um, could you tell us how the rest of the year is going to pan out? It's been a good start to the year. You've got a double-digit revenue run rate to begin the year with. Can you sustain that? Could your revenues look? Can your revenue growth guidance be about fifteen percent for the full year? Yeah, the revenue growth guidance is about fifteen percent. We have a very robust uh, pipeline, and okay. we are very bullish based on the pipeline that we have in terms of our performance for this year. Okay, good morning, Mr. Kanodia. Thanks a lot for joining us. Can you also break it up and tell us uh, how much will you get from the different segments on revenue growth for uh, all of FY23? So, uh, the uh, the highest growth is both in the uh, customer experiences and the uh, digital experiences and digital operations. And these are growing well. Digital technologies uh, is largely India focused. It's about 77% of our revenue comes out of India. And that's where we have a little squeeze on the EBIT margins as well as the revenue growth. We, we are increasingly focusing on the European and American markets now. And uh, we've seen an increase of about 36% in the pipeline uh, coming out of the US. So that focus is beginning to show results. And I'm very bullish that we should be able to uh, see good revenue growth after the, this year. This year, we've got another two or three quarters to go. Uh, but next year, certainly, we'll see a significant improvement. This is for uh, digital technologies, this focus on Europe as well as uh, America? It's for all, uh, okay, specifically okay. digital technologies, but for all the others as well. Okay. Uh, hi, Mr. Kanodia. Uh, in terms of margins, which saw some compression this time around, uh, yeah. you know, over the next few quarters, can you make that up? What is the headroom that you have now that, like you said, you're changing focus? Yeah, absolutely. So we will see uh, this year we will uh, not remain in the negative on digital technologies. The other two are at about 23.3 and 23.2% uh, EBIT margin, which is good. Uh, digital technologies will certainly be in the black within this financial year. But could you give us a consolidated growth uh, guidance, uh, consolidated guidance on the margins? So we, I think we will maintain uh, a top line growth of about 15% and the bottom line at about 13, 12%, uh, roughly 12 to 13% should be certainly the range for this financial year. And EBITDA margins will be 15, 16%? Can you say that again? EBITDA margins should be closer to 15%? Uh, no, we were at about 12% right now. We should range between 12 and 13%. For the full year? For the full year. Okay, 12 to 13% for the full year. Can you also tell us what the deal pipeline looks like? We know you added around uh, 19 clients in Q1. I can uh, see that in the presentation. But can you tell us what the deal pipeline looks like for uh, the coming year? The deal pipeline looks very, very robust. As I said, the US uh, pipeline has improved by about 32%, which is very good. We have several multi million dollar deals on the table. Our AFC business is also looking good. Uh, we signed two large deals in the last quarter of last year, which is uh, uh, Kolkata Metro and Delhi Metro. And those revenues will start kicking in this financial year. Plus, we are well positioned with several uh, large deals right now uh, on the table with customers. So as we close a few of them, we should be looking very good. Uh, likewise, on the IT side, as BPO side, there are a couple of several multi-million dollar deals. And our automation area has also been picking up. And we've signed two, 10 new logos this quarter. At this rate, we should run at about 40 to 50 new logos within this financial year for uh, intelligent automation. So across the board, we are looking at a very good good pipeline. Uh, so you Our have... deal size, uh, we signed about $19 odd million of uh, new deals in Q1 of this year versus uh, $14 million in uh, Q4 of last year. So that's also looking very healthy. Uh, you have about uh, 400 crores of uh, cash what is the plan that you have for this? So uh, one is that we are focusing heavily on our products business, and that's where you see the IT margins also taking a dip because of the heavy investments we are making in products. Second is we are looking at some M&A as well. Uh, none of them have matured to the level that we need to uh, discuss, but yeah, there are a couple of companies on, on the cards that we are in dialogue with from and? acquisition <coughs> 
And the M&A targets that you're currently exploring, would they be in digital ops, digital experience, or digital technology? Uh, right now, they are in digital technologies and digital operations. Right now, we don't have a M&A target in digital experience. And do you think you will be able to close one by the end of this financial year? Uh, we should. We should. Okay. But it's a little too early to talk about that. Okay, Mr. Kanodi, I also want to ask you on the attrition. It's extremely high at around 36%. Can you tell us, do you think we've seen the worst of it and it's likely to moderate from these levels? Or do you expect it to remain at these kind of elevated levels for a, for a while longer? No, it, was, it will certainly reduce in data matrix. We have a spike in Q4 in terms of, uh, we have a spiky business when we do uh, tax processing uh, for some of the uh, U.S. customers. At that time, we ramp up and ramp down in Q1. So some of this is, is the normal for datamatics, and therefore it does, it's not alarming because we always have a ramp up in, Q, in Q4 and ramp down in Q1, and you're seeing the effect of the ramp down give you a 36% attrition. Uh, but it's not uh, normal, and uh, I'm not nervous about it. Uh, our cycle is like this. Hmm. Um... Although having said that, this year uh, you can see across the industry attrition has gone up. Uh, because of the wage hikes and things like that. So uh, this year is a little unusually high uh, across the board. Mm. What is the revenue mix that you're currently targeting? Right now, digital ops is about 45% of your revenues. Digital experience is 14%, while digital technology is 41%. Is this yes. the skew? Is this the breakup that we should work with? Or are you looking to change it? Uh, the digital experiences will grow faster. And that's relatively small, so on a small base, you will see a higher growth. Um, digital operations is also on a healthy wicket. Digital technologies, as we pivot a little more towards the European and American markets, you'll see the uptake. So that'll take about six to nine, uh, six, six to nine months to show those results. So I think next year we'll be okay on them. Uh, but right now, the growth will come more from digital operations and uh, digital uh, experiences. All right, growth will come more from digital operations as well as experiences, and you see your margins at 12 to 13 percent. Mr. Kanodia, thank you very much uh, for joining. Just, yeah, sure, just go ahead. Correction, the, the EBITDA margins are about 15 percent. You were talking about EBITDA at about uh, 12 to 13 percent, but EBITDA is about 15. All right, got that. Thank you so much, Mr. Kanodia, for stopping by and speaking to us about your Q1 earnings.